So I've been reading up a little bit about processing. I never knew much about it, so I decided to buy a book by Casey and Ben. And it describes the processing language. It's a low-level graphics language, but it's uh, pretty easy to use and code. And actually, it was what the Arduino was based on. The Arduino was the physical computing and an electronic version of the graphics API. So then along came the touch shield. And I guess it made sense to try to port processing to the touch shield. Uh, but it took a little while, and I finally got it done the last couple weeks. So this is hot off the press, and I'll definitely be trying to optimize this over time. But each of these uh, Arduinos is running a piece of source code from one of the examples in the book. So the first one is from page 67, and it shows a little grid. And so all I have to do is I'll plug in the Arduino, since the Arduino is running the function, and I turn it on, and the touch shield is now programmed with a little API I'm calling subprocessing. It's a subset of the processing language that's totally ported over serial, and it runs on the touch shield in the Arduino. Um, it's not the fastest, but it definitely gets the job done. So that was the first demo I thought was kind of neat. The next one was on page 92, and on 92 they had a color demo, so it's almost a line-for-line -line copy of the source code. It's tweaked a little bit because the touch shield doesn't have the same boundary uh, protection. But here you can see the, the processing functions are running and this one's running a blue to green color spectrum. That's the, the second demo. Uh, I thought this next one was kind of neat. This was an example from page 203. Of course the source code I'll put on the in the, the blog article. This is on 203. This is a recursive function. So the recursive function shows a circle and then it displays circles inside and out. So here I'm putting in the third one here, and when I turn this on, it takes a little bit, but then you can see it's running the recursion just like it would on the normal processing. It didn't take too long for that one. Uh, the next one is page 239. This one was a little bit harder because this is the first one that used mouse input, and so it took a little while. Since it's a touch screen, I can actually get mouse X and mouse Y coordinates just like the processing API calls for and so I ported those over as well this takes a little bit longer to boot up um, but I'll show you I'll show you how it runs as soon as it does uh, first it has to set up the screen coordinates and then it has to set up the uh, the graphics and the example in the book says that wherever it touches it creates a um, a sphere around it of different sizes. Now that's it going out of bounds because I don't didn't do bounds protection. But this example is actually the same as it is in the book. As you can see, depending on where you touch it, uh, it updates. This is probably the most interesting one. It was kind of difficult to get the touch shield coordinates down to the Arduino, um, but, but I finally got it to work. Um, so, if I turn that off, I still have to work on the, the code for that. The last one that I thought was kind of neat was page 125, and this was a spiral program. I combined a couple of them from this page to make a, uh, the spiral with the changing colors. So this time it, it slowly creates a spiral and based on the radians around the central axis it changes the color or the hue of the circles that it draws so that you end up getting a fan out color spiral which I, well black and white grayscale spiral which I thought was kind of interesting I tried as hard as I could to make all the functions the same as the ones in the actual processing library so you can just copy and paste from different versions of processing. 
Anyway, I, uh, I'll definitely keep working on this in the next couple weeks, but hopefully that's uh, enough to give a little bit of a demo.